The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hello, Basil Chapman here on this Wednesday, the 10th of May. And in this particular session, I'm going to try my best to give a kind of a broader overview of what I'm looking, uh, certainly going into next week. And I, I, I will be away for just a little bit. And uh, so I, I will do my newsletter, but I'm, I think I'm going to have trouble getting the uh, remote down for my shows. So let me show you what I'm looking at. See the Dow? See the way it made this? Uh, this is a narrowing triangle or a wedge shape pattern. It gets smaller and smaller. It had the Chapman falling axe and it almost went one to one to the upside over there. These are techniques that I talk about all the time. I did a measured move by uh, a measured vertical analysis by saying, look, when it made that high on the 14th of April at 34,082, made this kind of almost cup formation. It went a little higher to 34,257, but look how weak the technicals were. That says that it should pull back, but it doesn't say, oh, my God, that's going to be the end of the world. It just says it's going to pull back. Well, it pulled back, hit the 200 period moving average, um, I made a chap with a red Roman candle at a low. Well, we didn't know it was a low, but it looked like it was a low for this particular down phase. And then it ran up. Now it's more than three bars or three days in this case. Above that, so that's a good sign. If you look at, but look at the, the MACD's weak, the stochastics at 47%, on balance volume is getting to almost the oversold level, but very weak. The nine period is still under the 14 period moving average. It's trying, let me just have a look here in our bigger picture. Ooh, do I have it? Yes, I do. All right, there. I wanted to look at it. Let's go to the Dow right here, INDU. So you can see that the nine period moving average went pink from green, that's a negative, and it hasn't turned up yet. It is close to trying to turn up. So my contention has been, and if you look at the S&P, it did not hold the, the red for more than, uh, the, or the pink for more than a day, and now it's made a little bounce off the nine and 14 period moving average, which is still positive. So my contention is, at this particular point, that we've got a mix between uh, buying pressure that comes in on every dip, but we also have selling pressure that comes in on every rip to the upside. More importantly, if you look at this rectangle formation in the Dow weekly chart between the 34,000, I should have typed that in, 34,000, is that uh, seven something? Yeah, 34,712 area, the week of the 16th of December, and I'm not going to go to the low of 31,042. I'm going to go to this low right here that I've chosen as the rectangle low of 32,600, let's call it. I think we can stay here for a little bit as we're building up momentum with so many people being very nervous about the market and building up huge cash positions. I mean, uh, I don't know how many people I've spoken to, there's lay people who aren't really interested in the market, who uh, introduced to me, uh, just within a short period of time, the idea of what's going on with these bank stocks? What, what's going on? What's with the Fed? What's with this shutdown? That's going so that kind of nervousness when it goes to my my contention has always been when the news sinks to the level of the lay the layman, it's done. You're pretty much the worst part of it is over. Now you might get some residual action. But uh, once the layman's talking about it, it is the horse is way out the barn. So it's not the beginning of something. It is more getting close to the end of something. So as I look at that, I think looking out into the summer, the cash buildup, if we start to trade at any point in the Dow above 34,700, a trade, I don't mean just pop there once and then give back half that gain. I mean trade there on the weekly basis. I think the money is just going to come in and come in and come in, but we have to get there. So within that context, what I'm looking at is the Dow, technically I should be short because the nine period is under the 14, 
but I'm still seeing some residual strength to say, hey, we could have a couple of pop-ups. So it's saying me, hey, it's just a mixed market. I don't see a short here that says, ooh, we're going straight down to 33,200 in the next uh, few days. Maybe over the next week we could see something like that. But at this particular point, you can see today is just a perfect example. CPI comes out and the market just immediately, oh, let me show you this. So the market immediately spirals to the upside. And what do we get? We get the Chapman Wave Eiffel Tower, a failure pattern. I remember I, I like to use Phantom Peaks because in the E-mini, it's trading in 25 cent increments. So if I see a little nick or a little turn in the on-bounds volume or the stochastic or something, and it's a parallel high, I will, to be able to get to a peak D quicker, I'd be a little aggressive and say that's a red, a phantom peak C, and that is, and you had two, three, in fact, I, uh, parallel highs, and that just says to me, hey, that that makes that a D. And therefore, I saw that D coming along uh, in the 10-minute chart, in the one-minute chart of the E-mini, S&P E-mini, look what happened. It spiraled, it, yeah, we spiraled, we've got a peak A, peak B, C, it holds the left side low, suddenly it pops to a D, and then continues high, and it goes um, A, because it's underneath the previous one, so it's gray A, and then it goes E slash B, F slash C, parallel highs all the way for about, oh man, for about um, 20 minutes or more. And then suddenly pops to a D as the, as the um, nine o'clock hour starts, pulls back, makes a cup formation, right shoulder failure pattern, the dreaded H, pulls back. And where do we go? We go right to the 10 minute chart. I type this into the den. Eiffel Tower, a failure pattern right at the 200 period moving average support in the 10 minute chart. And where were we? There it is. So now you can see, remember this dashed line, this goes back way over a week. I like to put it in once in a while, what I think is a really important horizontal line. This is at, at 41.48. Keep in mind today, 41.48 is your fulcrum level. If there is another move below the 41.48 level in the E-mini, and it starts to trade under the 200 period moving average of 41.39, I think the high for the day has been done. And we will just kind of meander, probably making slightly lower lows and lower highs. But in the meantime, that's your magnet line. All right, got that out the way. Now we want to talk about uh, what I'm thinking about for next week. So next week, the Dow, I think, is in a trading band. The S&P, when we look at that, has a really nice cup formation in the weekly chart. It's starting to stall. The daily chart had that um, the one narrowing this narrowing triangle pattern, rising cone pattern. And what happens is we are trading in the inside track repellent zone. And that just says to me, a gray, gray peak A, gray peak, gray leg B right now in the Chapman Wave. Those of you who use Chapman Wave methodology, you know exactly what I'm talking about because the stochastic hasn't given a, a really good buy signal. The MACD is not positive. It just says it is holding, but in fact, it is kind of weak, and it's just in a waiting mode. It actually looks exactly what's going on in the general market, uh, in the consensus. Let's wait and see what happens. I think Friday there's going to be another talk, as if anything's going to get done. On Friday, uh, there'll be another another uh, refusal to compromise all around, and we'll see what happens there. So we could see a little choppy action going into Monday. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, so, uh, so in the Chapman methodology, if I can get this right, yeah, I, I was answering questions during the break. Now, I'm, oops, yeah. So in the, in the Chapman wave, this H pattern failure occurs at a peak A or B very often. It can go to a C, but it's peak A or B. And that's exactly what we've got to be careful of. You see this pattern that I'm looking at here with this doji candle peak G on the 1st of May at 4186.92. Pull uh, has three sharp moves down, then rallies back, goes into the H wave inside track. Uh, now it's the repellent zone. And we've popped there a couple of times, hit the lines a couple of times, four sessions. So this is the straight line down because we made we make things up by straight line up or down cup formation arch formation. Here's a mix of the straight line down and the potential for an arch fading at a peak A or B. It says if it takes out that left side low, be careful. It can go, go a lot lower. Well, that's down to the 40, 40, 48 ish area. So we're at 41.29. That's way up. So what I would say is that by Monday, if we're trading below 40. 90, 40, 85 on the s and trading. Does that be a close? Just trading, there's a real good chance that it's going to try to test the 4050s. And that's the way I'm looking at it. But if there's a move at this point into the today's highs, 41.54, if we go to 41.68, 41.72 in the next two, three days, that is just saying that there's enough residual strength to try to get in the weekly chart. Let me get out of this. In the weekly chart, to make this cup formation more like a v-shaped formation but we call it a cup formation to just test the 4195 high to make either a peak c1 c2 or maybe a new leg d just a penny above that 4195.55 area goes to d i think that's going to fail and that's the reason why I, i'm going to draw this in and we'll see um when we're back live again uh in about a week or so um, whether or not we've what we've done, all right. And you remember the talking about uh, rectangle formations. Whoops! You remember the uh, TLT? I spoke about this some time ago, and I said TLT. I was on the on the line with uh, Mike from Boston, I believe it was, and I said, you know what? I'm looking at the TLT. This was what date was that? That was on the 13th of the week of the 13th. No, it was actually the 13th of April. Let's go to the 13th of April. This is the week of the 13th of April. Right. Yeah. 
there, uh, right there, right there. And I said, you know, Mike, I bet that you can, you can, we can speak again. And I had this rectangle set up, and the rectangle says that by the 26th of May, end of May, we could be calling, speaking again. And there's a good chance that the um, TLT is just stuck in this rectangle range. The midpoint right here is a 103, if I can get to 104.40. Um, but we could be at 106, which it was at 106 right then. I said it could still be stuck in a rectangle formation and just going sideways. So here we are at 103.75. Mm -hmm. uh, today's high was, in fact, 104.24. So, and now this is very important because in the daily chart, there's a rectangle formation that it's been in uh, since uh, March. And look at this. Twice now, we've gone underneath the low of the 19th of April, and we're just above it now. The low was on the 1st of May at 102.84. So it's making lower lows and lower highs, and that's just saying yields could be going higher. But so far, I think they just stuck in a range. All right, so I want you to get that out of the way. Then I want you to go to the XLF to say the questions about the XLF. I've got to see some kind of veracity, some kind of move to the upside in the financials, S&P Select Financial, there we go, fund. And I'm going to be, I'll, I'll give it, I'll excuse that, I'll go to the body of the candle. So there's it, your falling X formation. This is the resistance line at 3286, and here we are at 3212. Until I see that, I can't believe that a really strong rally is going to kick in. And that takes me to KRE. Questions come about K KRE. Trading down 36 cents at 37.06. Uh, I was asked about it intraday yesterday, and I said the 37, maybe 38, 20s, maybe 40s, that would be the upside. I'd see just on a bounce right now. And if it does that, um, you got to, if you're in, so someone was in calls, I said that that's what you're looking for. Um, and at this particular point, I think this is now quite shaky. Because if today's high of 30, oh, 38.20 was held, by the end of the day, we could even have gone above the pink 38.48 um, nine-period exponential moving average. So a lot's going on. And because a lot's going on, I think that the upside is really limited at this particular point. I'm going to go to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, how are you? I'm doing quite well, Basil. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm going to be You're back not... in your neck of the woods in a, a couple of weeks. I've never been to Boston, but I'm going back to my son's actually getting his master's from Harvard. So oh, going isn't back that there nice? to, well, to watch, know, watch him walk. Oh, that'll be oh, that's fantastic. Usually it rains on on, on graduation day at Harvard. So just to get your <laughs> umbrella. It's, usually, it, it's gonna, sunny I'll and bring bright. My umbrella. And then, <laughs> yeah, sunny bright, and then all of a sudden, so you can get a, one of those transparent umbrellas so that you can enjoy the sun. And also sit in the rain. Anyway, congratulations. What 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 uh, subject? What what's his interest? It's uh, foreign relations. Oh, I, I I would say that that's here to stay. <laughs> that's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish him the best of luck. That's fantastic. And and Joe, you know, Boston uh, Boston is a fantastic place. It's just I, I'm I'm looking at the weather in different places. Um, you know, England they're having rain for weeks and, and the next couple of weeks of rain. I always say that Boston, although it can get really cold, it's such a sunny place. Even in the middle of winter, unless it's snowing, that the sun always comes out. Most of the time it's sunny. And that to me is a big thing. I need the sun. But in terms of the arts and all the other things, it really is an exciting place. I mean, we were at the ballet just recently. They've improved so much. They're really top class now. At the symphony the other day, it's called World Class Symphony. I don't have to talk about the sports. So yeah, it's, it's really a, a terrific place. And um, uh, give me a yell. Maybe maybe we can meet when you when you get uh, get to this area, or maybe you just won't have time because you'll be with family. But in the meantime, I what would I'll you have, like to look? I hope at? we'll have time. Yeah. <laughs> oh great. Okay. Well, let's look forward to that. You'd like to look at. I was going to ask uh, ask you about IPI Intrepid Potash. Now I don't have a position. I just. It caught my interest because I think you'll like the chart on the weekly. It has, if you take that center point, at, uh, I think yep. it's April of 2022. And you, you can go to the left of the chart. I think it's right about the beginning of 2021. 
you know, count the months. I think it's around 14, 15 months. Now we're on the right hand side. We're getting close to that. You know, it looks like it's all going to match up pretty good with your, your plumb line and the, the, you know, that, so that little pattern that you like we'll, to do. We'll do this. To, to, you know, I used to have this completely notated. It's here in my files somewhere, but when the last time I had to shut down very suddenly, um, what happened was uh, I, I, I lost some of my older charts. The newer charts were all there, but the older ones were kind of, they're there somewhere, but they didn't show up. So it just takes me a moment. In fact, we've got a break coming up. That's a perfect time for me to do this. Oh, you're absolutely right. It's actually a few, uh, just a few months late to take out that left side low O oh, of May of 2021 at 2282. We'll be back in a moment with Brenton Martinez looking at IPI and Shepard Potter. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den and Discord is accessible on mobile or tablet as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman, Dow is down uh, 50, and the SP is up 13. We're on the line with Brent Martinez, California. We're looking at IPI, and Brent uh, note noted a particular technique that I talk about a lot. And that is looking at left side lows to see whether or not in time there's a number of bars to the left side that match in a sequence like a mirror image the number of bars to the right side to retest that low remember the arch formation in this case is inverted um, inverted v 
So this is what I'm looking at. The low that was made, I'm looking at the weekly chart of Intrepid Potash Inc. And uh, so the low that we're looking at, I don't know if this is the one that you're looking at, is the one that goes to the low of uh, 22.82. I should type that in. 22.82. And I think I said April the week or something. 22.82. And just I'm going to put in a date, just uh, 22, just for the moment, and I'll come back to it uh, to check. That's 2021. Yeah. So you're looking at the low that was made. Oh, it was May, May the 5th, May the 14th, May the 14th, 514. So if you count the number of bars, which I'm not going to do, all the way to the high that was made uh, a year later at 121.72, that's 100 points. That's a fantastic gain. I remember that very well. Uh, there were others in the group. So it goes to 121.72, April of 2022, and then it comes down. So my plumb line is that particular high. And let me draw that in here. Straight up, right there. That's my plumb line. All right. Got it. So now what I'm... Did I do that correctly? I don't know if I did. It looks to me like it's got a lean. It looks like the leaning tower of Pisa. There we are. Okay. So that comes in right there. And so it takes you to, if I can get the little right there, it should take you to about April of 2023. That would be uh, a year on the way up and a year on the way down. Now, normally I like to draw uh, an, an arch formation. This is definitely a V. So I'm going to draw it in as a V like this. There goes the up line. There comes the down line. But I have to take it to where we are right now. Now, this is my problem. Remember, we looked at the dollar. This is a weekly chart. Let me just go to the dollar DXY. And I showed you the same kind of inverted V from the 101.30 June of uh, the week of the 3rd of June 2022. And what does it go to? It goes to 100 uh, on the uh, right here in the beginning of the year. Balances and now it's doing a retest. So now let's go to IPI. And you'll see that what we've done is we've gone a little bit lower. So I always like to look at the left side to say what would be um, the low, 21.92. Well, today it's at 19.31. So it's gone even lower. So my problem here is because you're looking at a weekly chart, yeah, everything's looking as if there is a match. And if you look at the, month, uh, the, year, the monthly chart, it's almost like an Eiffel Tower, the one that I just showed a little earlier on the E-mini. It went straight up. Well, not quite straight up, but it came straight down. So the momentum on the downside, I'm thinking crash, that if you if you are, uh, say, on a motorbike or something and you slide on this, in the sand, you just keep going and going until either the gravi gravity or the friction slows you down or you hit something. In this case, I don't see the friction kicking in in the monthly chart. And because of the red candle that we've got this month, uh, this this week, following up on last week's big red candle, I'd say I'd put it on my watch list. And the way I would look at it is it's going to have to be a process. I don't see any V. I don't see any. There are no signs yet to say that there could be a V-shaped pattern that takes you above the gap low, the gap high of the um, 4th of May, which is at uh, 2430. So if and the little silent doji that we had yesterday is just a clue to say that there is a chance that we are trying to form some kind of some kind of a, a barrier on the downside, a support level that's going to hold. So have you done anything yet? No, no, Basil. I, I honestly, I, I guess I'm probably a little further to the left on the chart from my starting point to get to okay. the midpoint. And so, so I was where did, still where's looking your starting at point? At least a couple of months or more before I do oh, anything. Oh, okay. All right. So then, this is what I would say to you: because it's reached this first level of support, and you can see it kind of hung around. It went all the way down to the 25, 25 low in in March, and then it rallied, made an arch formation, and uh, and it's now made a lower low. That's my dreaded H pattern. So that just says you've got two monthly bars in which you need to close above uh, 25, 25, which is say, great, now you can rally to the next resistance on the upside, but you're probably not going to make a new uh, monthly, a uh, weekly high. So, okay, so you've done nothing yet, but I would do this. I, the way I'm looking at it, because it took that out, 
I'd have to go to the next level of support, but that takes me months. That takes me almost uh, like two and a half months, maybe. So I normally would bump up against the Eiffel, the uh, Grand Canyon cliff left side, and I'd say, okay, that's what I'm looking at, but that's going to take me out months. I, I think there's going to be a, a rally sooner than that. So you know what I would do? Use your daily chart, since you haven't done anything yet, but it's a great experiment in seeing how something that comes back two years later after really skyrocketing to the upside, pulling back, can it find support? And this is what I would tell you that I would look at. If in the next two weeks, um, IPI has held the 1830, I, I prefer it doesn't hit 18, but let's call it 18. Let's call it 18. If it can hold 18 on a weekly basis and have a rally to 20, 2380 to maybe 24, preferably take out the high that was made uh, on that candle of the uh, gap down 2430 level. If it can get to the tw I, if we can get to the 23s, that's where I'd start looking at it because the magnet of this left side low is so strong that it's now going to become a repellent zone for the shorter term. So it's a process. And unless something happens in the whole area of potash, these minerals, and all of a sudden there's a shortage of something like that, this thing needs to make a V-shaped recovery really sharply and get to 25.50, and it needs to do it in May. I don't see that yet, so I think you're right in holding off. But let's, let's look at it again and maybe in about a week or two and see what it's done, because this is in the area of the soft commodities that I look at, the mineral commodities, and when they move, they move quickly to the upside, and you can see they move really quickly to the downside. So keep it on your list. And uh, give me a yell when you're going to be coming to the Boston area. Let's let's meet. Yeah, what I'll do, Baz, I'm going to send you an email with my cell phone. And oh, okay, then we can great. communicate before I come out. That'll be wonderful. Good. And that'll be somewhere in the beginning of June? It's at the end of this month. Oh, it's end. Okay, great. All right, looking forward to it. So thank you for calling. We'll okay. be watching IPI. Thank you for calling, and have a great day. Thank you, Baz. All right, thank you so much, Baz. Well, take care and, and enjoy your time off. Thank you very much. So, folks, just as we're about to get back, let me go to the E-mini, because you remember I'm saying that this area right here, there's your dreaded H, there's your single leg A to the upside in the 10-minute chart. That makes this low on the 200 feet moving average in the E-mini of 41.41.00. Keep support. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, Corey. So uh, another, another question came about uh, K KRE, which is the S&P Regional Banking ETF, now down 47 cents at 36.95. That, the action yesterday it was okay because we, we went long a very small position and we took a less than a, what was a 1% uh, loss, a really, a really tiny loss. Uh, but it was a, a kind of an experiment that if it worked, would have been really nice because it would have been good for the market. Um, but that it dipped a little deeper than I wanted. It kind of more than filled the gap from the, uh, the 4th of May at 34.52. That was the low. Um, and now it's looking more like it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a tough time holding. So I'd be really careful um, if you are uh, – the question was someone had the um, – I think the 35 calls, you had a fabulous move up this morning. I hope you took something off because um, this lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m and then breaks down, does it like a one-to-one -to, -one to a key uh, um, area. In this case, the high of the 52.89, uh, the high of the 10th of March. So that says if I do a measured move, and that's the reason why I thought there was a chance I would have preferred a second, uh, yeah, a second slide to the downside. Uh, so that's the level that we're looking at here. And you take it from the high there. Yeah, look, it did it all. Oh, just, it just missed doing it, a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. It's a propeller shaft move. So this is really important because if it takes out yesterday's low, uh, this is not going to be a chain wave price volume e climax uh, success it'll be a failure because and I, I did say that I, I would prefer to have another gap down bar but it had a lot of the characteristics so this is really important by today's Wednesday by Thursday afternoon Friday this time by about noon Eastern time I, I would I would if if you are long and thinking long at all as a position rather than just a short-term position I just I want to see I'd be disappointed if it hadn't hit 3890s, and it's at 3691 right now. So that's that's uh, something to watch. Next question was Amazon. Now look, this is the one I'm talking about. The diverse market. I had a question about Hi Basil, can you please explain what you see in the weekly chart of the QQQ? We'll do that right now. Look, yes, Amazon. I had Amazon as a price time match, a potential, um, going to. The high of 114 round number high that was made uh, back in February plummets down to the 80s. And it screams back, but it starts to further the Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line and does go pretty close. It goes to 100 and, uh, 110, almost 111, three points away. Then it pulls back, and now it's having a fulfillment. You remember I'm talking about the momentum when you've got momentum. And suddenly there's a slide, and where, where do you stop? How, how does it? Well, it doesn't until it, it shows some kind of either a resistance level or, or a, a support level. In this case, it'd be a resistance level, and it's now it has the left side high of 100. Let's call it 111. Today's high is 100. 
and 10.20. But the MAGD is good. It's not great. It's just good. Stochastic is very weak. On balance is a tad overbought, but so far that's helping the price. The 9 is still over the 14. It never went negative at all. And since, in fact, it crossed positive um, back on the 17th of March, it's been positive. So I suspect that this is telling us a lot. It's telling us that within the context of different sectors, Amazon still has enough momentum to the upside, and it's in a, a pretty serious buy mode in the daily. The weekly chart is in a buy signal. I haven't been able to upgrade it. Maybe by the end of this week I can, but it is a buy signal, and it looks very much like it wants to get closer to the high that was made at 140. I think I said 114. Is that the one? Oh, there it is. Yeah, at 114 round number high. But it also says it's tremendous support, and it gapped up today. I don't know what the reason is, but it gapped up today. You've got 107 support for the 200 period moving average. You've got uh, 101 the, uh, in the area that it made the low just recently, 100 to 101. So I like this is what I'm talking about. This is a very diverse market. Uh, for instance, we, I had a screamer that I wanted to buy today that is stuck in the single digits. It had all the characteristics I wanted. But I needed to see a little bit of a dip. I didn't have a split split position for subscribers. If I have a split, normally I would say I'd prepare to accept a little bit of a gap to the upside. But I just, in this particular market, I felt I needed to be a little quite careful. I wanted a pullback. It still could happen. But it's already done this. In fact, I'll show the stock, IOVA, because now I don't think we'll get it because it's already extended very much. So it was right there in leg B. Oh, I did the analysis. I did everything just great. Look at this. Here's the, even the 120 minute chart. Uh, what is the biotech? Some of them have been just unbelievably on a tear. I've got a whole slew of them. This is the one I chose. And I drew this in. I said F slash B in the, in the 120 minute chart. Beautiful support held in the weekly chart. IOVA is Biotherapeutics Inc. In integrates uh, nutritional therapeutics and IT, autoimmune diseases, monthly chart. Oh, um, this is what, uh, Brent, this is what you might be wanting to look at. I did a left side, right side price time match. IP is not uh, unlike this to the load that was made in December of 2018 at 726. It screams up to the, <laughs> I can't believe it. It screams up to the 50, wind up with that in, into the 5421 area. Uh, on January of 2021, and look, beautiful arch formation, beautiful time sequence. Here's my midpoint, and then what did it do? It went right there. It went to slightly lower lows. It almost looks like the IPI, but look what happened. The MACD, the histogram started to improve. Let's just look at IPI for a moment. IPI. Yeah, you see, you're not getting that improvement at all yet in IPI. So uh, intrepid. So Potash, and now let's just go back to IOVA. Um, and I, I normally would say, in this day, if I'm having a split position, I'm prepared to a little bit buy a little bit of a gap to the upside. That really was too much. I mean, yesterday's high was seven dollars and forty forty one cents, and today's low is seven oh forty two. Oh, I guess I could have gone anyway. Now it's, in, it's still in leg B, and I did the left side, right side price time match. 7.62 was my target. I wanted a little bit of a pullback and to get two positions, one on the pullback and one a little bit deeper pullback, but a very tight stop. And then as it moves up, just take a little bit off, take a little bit off and raise the stop, and then your screamer becomes a position. So that would have been great. Oh, man. Well, anyway, that's, so we missed it. But look, the stochastic has got the Chapman Wave squash. I didn't, I didn't say that in my newsletter. I forgot about that. I saw it and then I forgot to put it in. It also had a huge volume low, but this is not a gap. This is not a Chapman Wave uh, volume cli uh, climax, uh, selling climax. No, this was just a really big volume on the turnaround. And look at it from 528 to today's high 742. So there are going to be lots of these stocks. In the meantime, I, for my subscribers, we, now I'm back to putting these in play. Um, and I like it very much. I still like this in leg B, but now when you get in, it's a different, it's now it's a different thing together. And not only that, if you look at the weekly chart, the resistance up thin, right here, we hit it, exactly, look at this. Oh.
is a long term down, down trend line. Oh, what a beautiful stock at least for this moment. I'll be back down to 180, 165. SB is now down. To TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN. FNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, right, so let me just do this. I'll do a run of what I'm thinking about next week. So the QQQs just snuck above the Chapman Wave inside. Uh, and we got inside track repellent zone. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Cancel. Uh, yeah, we go. There we are. You see that? It just snuck above it. And I suspect, as I'm looking at it, that sometime next week, even if the target has been for this week to try to get you in the price time match, to try to get you 334.42. That was the high back in last year. I think it was September. Let me just double check. That's the case. August. August, the week of the 19th. Well, it's worked so hard, and it just hasn't got the momentum. It's, it's almost like the distribution here. So I'm looking at this, and I think that I, I wouldn't be surprised if next week at some point we test. We can go a little higher, but at some point there's a chance where we actually test the three. We're at 322.83. We test between 320 and 318. We take out 318, and it could be a very soft week just waiting for something or other. Um, the question came in, do you think the Biden bombshell had anything to do with the market drop? It's more important than a P.E. ratio. I, I'm not sure what the bombshell is. So I, all I can say is I'm just looking at the chart. And the chart just says to me, I said this for a while now, I see upside, a lot of resistance, slightly like um, 
what's his name, Bo Bo Bart Simpson's hairstyle, the spiky, and maybe there's a punk rocker, but a, a spiky move that keeps coming back down to the bass. And for me, the bass now is going to be the three. 318 will be key support for the for the QQQ. So I think most of the work to the upside is done. Now there's a consolidation going on. And I think that's for the general market. So the TLT tells me, oh, no, I need to do that. TLT says, I make a mistake, yes. Oh, TLT says, um, the uh, on short term, the 101 level is key support. It's at 103.98 right now. But I think it's in a trading range in this weekly chart. So I think the market's just going to be uh, digesting big gains over the next week or so. I'll be back uh, Monday week, and I hope you have a